Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful arena. I mean, um, I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised that it was a nice, such a nice bowl and a great place, obviously. I wish I was here last week. I think it was sand out. Yes. You've got plenty of experience with the MLS and various other ventures. What can you bring from those experiences to the MLS? Oh, uh, lots of mistakes made that hopefully <laughs> won't be repeated at this league. <laughs> Uh, it's 21 years of, um, you know, a lot of work and uh, a lot of good work. Uh, so hopefully uh, we learned a bunch of stuff over there that we're going to bring bring to this league. Uh, I'm really excited about this product. The product is spectacular. You know, in a lot of ways, that our, we play the best lacrosse in the world here in our league, and we didn't really have that in Major League Soccer. So it's pretty exciting to know that you actually represent the best product and the best players in the world in your league and it's pretty exciting. I know expansion isn't the first thing on your mind, but with a league like this, it's a possibility at any time. Have there been any talks? Well, actually, expansion is the first thing on my mind, as well as digital media and getting our digital media platform built and the grassroots program started. And, uh, it all starts with the five-year plan. And we finally have a league now with the five-year plan. So there's a, that plan is in place. It's going to start to get executed on. The owner adopted it uh, about three weeks ago at a board meeting. And um, you know, now the hard work starts. You know, and, that, and that plan is built on five um, pillars, expansion being one of them, this digital marketing platform being another commercial and broadcast strategy. We've never had a real cohesive long-term broadcast strategy for linear TV and digital TV, a grassroots program, and then team services. A lot of our teams are kind of out there on islands by themselves and they need help. They need help with everything from ticket sales to technical side of business to arena and negotiating arena deals to negotiating TV deals and, and the league needs to support those teams get them to do better and perform better. You know, I, I remember when you had your introductory press conference talking about the digital platform. You know, I know that was something you wanted to get rolling quickly. What's the progress on that? You know, what are you, what's your vision for the digital platform moving out? Well, well, so we're, we just got it approved. We just got the funding for it approved, and we're going through a vetting process, talking to a number of really top-level, world-class firms that can help uh, rebuild our current website, um, develop a social media strategy, a PR strategy, a video strategy, collect a database. We don't have a database. You know, 30 years in the league and we've had millions of people going through turnstiles and we don't have a database. Um, and that's criminal in my opinion. So we're going to build that, um, bring partners into it. It's going to take time to build. It's not going to get built over one night or six months, you know, but we're hopeful before the launch of next season that we'll have uh, a new digital platform that we can push all this great video out. It's uh, created every weekend in venues like this. These players create this amazing stuff and, and we have no tool to really get it out there in mass. I think Snap, is it Snapchat, I think Snapchat did a did a thing with the mammoth yeah. last couple weekends Yeah, mm -hmm. last weekend. Yeah, last weekend, two and a half million, organically, two and a half million views of that. Which is, but organically. So think if we had a digital vehicle where we can actually promote that and partner with the Snapchats and Instagrams and Twitters and Facebooks and actually drive it out there. So out of 100 million Snapchat viewers, Two and a half percent of them, almost three percent of them, viewed NLL action organically, just like that. So we have to, you know, do a better job of getting our video content out, the great plays that the players make every weekend, the amazing stuff the fans do in the stands because <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, I said this when I first took the job. It's the best kept secret in pro sports entertainment. It stays in this building. And it doesn't leave, and, and we have to get it out. For, for the uh, overall game of lacrosse, has there been any talk of moving the season up so that your championship game 
is the last week of March, being that Major League Cross training camp starts the first week of April, so you do away with that overlay of the two leagues? Yeah, no, uh, there hasn't been any talk of that. It, it's going to be very difficult for us to do that, um, just because of our game schedule and the way we're, the way we're structured. You know, our, our season right now is um, probably in a great spot. You know, first quarter, second quarter of the calendar year is a great spot to be in from a lot of different reasons. Um, for our players, it's a perfect time for them to, to play. So I think I'm told we understand there's a compelling reason for the NLL to do it. I think we're going to stick with what we got. Um, we may move up our schedule into December, maybe starting a little bit earlier. And I'd like to be out before the NHL playoffs, but I'm not sure that that's possible. You said that this is your first official visit to Rochester. What's caught your eye so far? Or is there any, been anything that you've been impressed by just on your first impression here? Well, the owner is amazing. He's got an amazing owner in this club. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time with him over the last hundred days just talking about strategy and things that we need to do well and that we need to execute on well. And, um, I tell you, there's not a lot of owners like Kurt Styers that are as committed to their team and their sport. And, and I think I'm, and I don't think I'm blown away by the quality of his commitment and his love for the sport. Um, ownership is so important. And uh, we have nine really awesome owners in the league, and that's great to build on. My challenge is we need to get more of those. You know, we need nine more to, to marry up with the nine that we have. But ownership's great. Um, just getting a tour of the building now and seeing the building and um, pleasantly surprised. It's such a great bowl and we're really looking forward to the, to the game. Uh, the Nighthawks have done a great job filling it up tonight, so we're going to have a great crowd. And um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's great to be in markets like this. You know, it's not always about being in uh, a New York or an LA or a Chicago or a big market. It's, I'll take a full building in a mid-sized market like Rochester any day of the week over a half-built building in a, in a big market. So um, it's good to be here and it's good to see these guys, their attendance is up this year, double digits, which is awesome to see. Um, I'd like to take credit for that, but I can't. I have nothing to do with it. It's all the great work of uh, Kurt and his, his staff that he's put in place here. I know they've uh, increased the staff here, which is great. So uh, I'm happy for Rochester. I'm looking forward to, I took a picture of my first uh, Nighthawks fans. <laughs> <laughs> these two cats really impressed the hell out of me. See these guys? That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's what it's all about, right? That's what it's all about. Absolutely. They, uh, they're awesome. That's the fans of the future. You know, you're talking about the grassroots. Is that kind of where it starts getting the kids hooked at an early age and maybe totally. see lacrosse as a viable sport to pursue play? Yeah, well, it's not just pursue playing, but also, listen, you know, the vast majority of the kids playing will never be professional players, but they'll be the fans for life, right? So the sooner we get into the grassroots and being in front of kids like this, I mean, these kids have a dream. They have a dream to play here. Now, they may not play here, but rest assured, these guys are season ticket holders in 10 years or 12 years or whatever. So, you know, my, my vision of the grassroots program is that we are in 20 to 25 markets in North America with camp programs, player development, coaching education, um, summer camp programs, um, college IDs, college ID camps, and, um, you know, and really speak to these kids at a young age over many years, and then they grow up being fans of the Nighthawks or the Stealth or the Bandits or whoever. Um, but that's that sport, right? You know, you take what your father and your mother passed down to you, and that's we have to we have to do that. And this league's really never had a grassroots initiative.